have you been creating all of your arms and legs like this using the classic circle method and then yearning for plugins like rubber hose or limber to create your character limbs well frick those plugins because i'm about to show you how to get the same result for free well actually there is one cost the low low price of hitting that subscribe button this also gets you into the most exclusive and definitely real and verified club on youtube the xp guild where the only thing that matters is motion gains so let's gain some xp right now by firstly putting that circle bullshit into the trash because we're gonna start with a path with three path points and this is where it really starts to get juicy because this will allow us to get the rubber hose effect and create all sorts of styles on top more on this later. If you'd like to follow along with this tutorial, you can download the project files, link is in the description. But for now, we're gonna use the native plugin, Create Nulls from Paths. This is a really useful tool which allows you to link your path points to null objects by selecting the path and clicking Points Follow Nulls, like so. If you haven't used this plugin before, you can find it by clicking on Window and selecting it from the list. So I've gone ahead and named our layers accordingly and changed the color so that they're more visible on our arm layer. And now we're gonna use the free plugin Duik. The link to download this is in the description if you need it. We're gonna start by parenting our wrist to our elbow and our elbow to our shoulder. Then in Duik, we're gonna make sure that we're in our rigging tab and then in the links and constraints tab. Now, if we select all of our layers and hit auto rig and IK, we get a controller layer. Now check this shit out. We have an unstyled limb that can even overstretch when you're looking to exaggerate action. Now let's get into styling this limb. I want to show you two styles to showcase the possibilities of this method, but after that, I have the juiciest, never before seen, best kept rigging secret, 10,000 XP tip for you stick around. These are the two limbs we're going to recreate in After Effects. We have an arm type limb and we have a leg type limb. So let's get started. Firstly, I'm going to tidy up our comp by shying these layers by clicking this button and this button to hide them. Now we just have our controller layer and our arm layer. So let's twirl down our arm layer. And the first thing I want to do is change our stroke into a round join so that when we move it like this, we don't get that sharp angle we had before. I've also just used Overlord to bring in our arm layer from Illustrator so that we have something to work from. Firstly, we're gonna jump into our shape layer and uh, mess around with some of these internal properties here. So for starters, we have our group one. And I'm gonna hit enter to name this base. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to our taper properties because if you look at our reference, we have a bit of a taper going on this arm. So I'm gonna twirl that down and I'm going to increase the end length to 100% and I'm gonna to go to the end width. That about 65 is good. Now I'm going to duplicate our base layer and I'm gonna call this sleeve. Twirl that down. And the first thing we're gonna do is change our color to this pink. Then we're gonna click on sleeve again and we're going to drop in a trim path. This is gonna allow us to trim it so we have something the correct length. Let's change that to a whole number, something like 40. Let's come down and increase our stroke width. 360 will do. Then let's reset our taper and set our end length to about 8% and our end ease to 40%. I'm just going to now increase the end percentage so that our length is the same as our reference. The next thing we're gonna do is this little shadow. So let's go to our sleeve and let's duplicate that again. I'm gonna just twirl down this arrow so that I can bring sleeve two under sleeve one and rename it to shadow. And once again, we're gonna mess with our trim paths so that it sticks out a bit. Let's change our color so it matches the shadow color. Now let's twirl down our stroke, change our stroke width. I'm gonna zoom in, make sure it matches as close as possible. Now we're gonna to have to mess with that taper easing again. So what I'm gonna do is just adjust this end length so that we get the same kind of curve. Come back up to our end percentage. Now it looks like it could have a bit more curve. So let's make that 3%. Okay, so now for this extra sleeve color, let's twirl all this stuff down to neaten things up. And let's duplicate our sleeve for this cuff. Let's change our color for starters. Come into our trim paths, change to a butt cap. Okay, now let's twirl down our taper because once again, we need to fix this curve. Let's change our end length. The T looks good. Okay, I'm just going to uh, decrease our start a bit and that messes up our end length, so let's just fix that. Now, in order to get this next curve here, I'm going to duplicate our cuff. Let's call this cuff cover. Twirl it down, change the color to this pink, and we can just offset our trim paths, nice and easy. Let's duplicate this again, twirl our previous one down, because this is gonna be the line. 
I'm going to change the color to our line color and just bring it under cuff cover. And then with our trim pass, we can just do a little offset. Let's make it minus 26. And I'm just going to drop the stroke width just slightly. So let's create this circular sleeve accent now. And I'm going to use a very interesting method for doing this. So keep watching. Uh, firstly, I'm going to just twirl everything down to neaten everything up. Then I'm going to duplicate our base layer, bring it to the top, and let's call this oval. Let's change our color to what it needs to be. Now I'm going to change our stroke width to something like six. And then if I come over to add over here, I'm going to add an offset path. And what this does is pretty much what it sounds like. It offsets the path. So it's easier to see than to explain. So there you have it. Now, if I come over to add again and drop in around corners, we can increase the radius on this and get an oval shape starting to happen. Then let's add a trim path to this. With the trim path in this current position, you can see if I try to trim it, it's trimming the edge of this path and that's not what we want. But if I bring this above our offset paths and then you can see it trims the whole thing like it's treating it as a path. So you always need to keep in mind when using these modifiers that your stacking order does actually matter. Anyway, let's keep trimming our trim path and get it to where it needs to be. Something like that. Let's decrease our stroke. Four looks about right. And let's increase our offset so it's a bit wider. The next thing we need to do is change the position of it so that it matches our reference. And the way that we do that is by coming to the internal transform property of our oval. And if we come to our position on the X, we can just drag that over. Great. There's our first limb. And hopefully you've learned a lot already about uh, the inner workings of shape layers and all the cool things you can do inside them. And of course, the last thing we need to do is test this bad boy out. Yeah, so that's really awesome. Look at that. It stretches. I wouldn't suggest stretching these things too much, but for a bit of exaggeration here and there, especially for a quick action, this can really be helpful. One thing you may notice is that the forearm is going behind the sleeve and you may not want that. So an easy fix would just be to come over to our base, duplicate it, call this forearm, add a trim pass, trim to where you need it to be, come over to your stroke width, just decrease that so that you don't get a lump. And now it covers the sleeve. How dope is that? If that's not a good enough reason to like this video right now, I don't know what is. So now I've reset everything and I've brought in our leg as a reference from Illustrator. I've created a base once again. And for this particular style, we have an outer stroke. So I'm going to duplicate this base. I'm going to drag it below, call it base stroke, change the color to this dark blue, decrease the size of the base down to 140. And now we've created a stroke on the outside. Next, let's duplicate the base, call this pants. Let's change our color to the color of the pants, that purple. Change the stroke width. Looks like about 360 is right on the money. Let's go and add in a trim path and let's trim it down. Let's change our round cap to a butt cap. Fix our trim. Let's uh, duplicate our pants. Let's just change that to pants and change this to pants stroke. And now we just need to minus eight from this. And of course, change our pants stroke, this dark blue. And there we have our stroke. Now, if we want to get the circle back in as well, we just need to go to our pants, duplicate it, call it pants circle, and let's come into our stroke and change it to a round cap, and then just trim the bottom so it's not visible. So let's move forward onto this cool little accent on these pants. So I'm going to duplicate pants for this. I'm going to drag that up, call this pants accent. I'm going to change the stroke color to this dark blue, and I'm going to change the size to eight, because in this case, we're going to use our offset paths and increase the size on that. 34 is good. And we're going to add a fill and the fill of course needs to be this pink color. Then we just need to come down to our transform and move our position so that it's in the right place. Let's make that exactly minus 70. Okay, so the next thing we need to create is this kind of pants hole. For starters, let's twirl everything down to keep things tidy. And let's duplicate our pants accent, change our fill color to the dark blue and let's call it pants hole. Fill down our trim paths, change our end and start percentage so that they're matching the size we need. Let's reset our position back to zero and let's come into our offset paths and match the right size. Now what we're going to do 
is add a round corners and let's crank that up to about 70. And then I'm just going to mess with our start and end percentage on our trim path. I think that's fine. We don't need to be too anal about it. I am going to bring the offset path size just down one or two clicks. Now we need to make sure that our leg looks like it's actually coming out of the sleeve. So let's duplicate our base, drag it right to the top and let's call this bottom leg, pull that down, add in a trim path as usual and let's just trim the start. We also need to change our stroke to a butt cap and then trim to the right point. And that's it. Mm, look at that beautiful limb. Let's close this all down and let's test this bad boy out. And that's working exactly how we want it to. The only thing I'm noticing is that this is a bit sharp for me. So I'm just going to come into our leg, go to our pants accent. If I come into our offset pass, we can change the line join to a round join and that should fix that problem. And it does. And this is great, you know, it's stretching really nicely. This is just a really cool way to create limbs. And you can see we're getting something very similar to what you can achieve with plugins like Rubber Hose and Limber. And you can do it all yourself and just using free plugins and plugins that come native with After Effects. This method obviously requires some understanding of the inner mechanics and tools within shape layers. But once you do, the possibilities really open up. So play around experiment. In fact, here are some projects and animations I worked on where I used this exact technique to create limbs. Finally, for the secret rigging technique that truly takes your limbs to the next level. Let's start over with our styled limb and unparented nulls. Duplicate our knee null and call it knee bone, then parent the ankle to the knee bone and the knee bone to the thigh. Now select the thigh, knee bone and ankle nulls and once again hit auto rig. Now let's parent the knee null to the knee bone null and we can change the name to knee pose because look at this. IK with knee posing for unlimited posability. Frick yes baby. Doesn't this just make you wanna mwah mwah? Damn. I think that guy likes rigging a little too much. Oh yeah, move that fucking elbow baby. Mm. Join the guild, hit like for 100 XP and subscribe for a million XP.